We are back with another episode. We're here with the great legendary wide receiver, Herman Moore, talking about a big game on Sunday. But before we do that, got to talk about DeMar Hamlin, injury that took place on Monday Night Football. First off, for me personally, prayers go out to him and the family. Hope everything's okay. When you saw that, Herm, what was your initial thoughts as a former player who took a ton of hits? You know, I was, um, it was, it was a, it was a satin moment and it was one that you, you have no, no emotion other than just, you know, you're just, you're prayerful and you're, you're looking at this and going, this has happened to this young player. And even if, if it's not just a young player, it's any player that's out on that field, that's a, that's a place of combat. It's one that I think we take for granted as sports enthusiasts and fans that watch the game and we don't realize the impacts that take place and that every single play, these type of occurrences could, uh, could happen. Uh, unfortunately for, for this young man, for DeMar um, uh, Hamlin, it, it was just, it, it was, it was tough to watch because you see this young man get up and then just collapse back down. And I've seen a lot of guys get injured. I've seen a lot of guys get hit and knocked unconscious. Uh, but that one felt and looked different than anything I'd seen ever before. Um, the closest one is, you know, I've seen that happen with a, a couple of my teammates, but thankfully, and, and, and thank to the grace of God, they, they all recovered um, and, and weren't taken from this earth. But this, that, that was tough, Mike. I mean, I was, I remember I was sitting there watching, it looked like just a routine hit. And, uh, you know, I've seen much greater impacts. And when um, DeMar was dead, um, and up, you know, you're moving on to the next play. You're thinking about something else, even as a as a, a viewer. But then to see him fall and to see the reactions immediately of their teammates, of his teammates, um, became very, very concerning. Very concerning. It's absolutely scary. Very frightening to see something like that. Cardiac arrest. Player going down. Uh, I want to say a huge thank you to the medical staff from both teams, getting mouth to mouth resuscitation that quick. You know, getting oxygen to the brain, you know, you lose minutes without oxygen to the brain and you can have some serious damage. They were right on it and shout out to them again. God bless him and his family. Our prayers, Lions Nation Unite are all with him and his family. No doubt about it. And it, it, it's terrible to see. Hopefully everything goes good from there. But we're here also to talk about Lions and Packers. Big game Sunday night football. Detroit heading to Lambeau Field when it's cold. What do you see in this game for the Lions' perspective? What do they need to do to really command this game right now on Sunday Night Football? And as a former player, what do you think about playing on Sunday Night Football, the attention, the whole world to see our team play? Well, one, the, the first part of that is this is a, a great opportunity for the Lions. You know, many of us who watched them in the beginning of the season knew that they didn't um, potentially stand a, a chance to even be uh, in this moment in time and have this opportunity. So for them to claw their way back and to be here is is kudos to them. It's congratulations to them, no matter what happens. The second part is if I were them emotionally, I would go out and say, you know what, Green Bay is trying to take something from us. Um, we don't want to allow them to do that. That's something that I, if I'm a, you know, one of the main players on this team or one of the leaders, I'm going to go in and say, listen, we don't want them to think that we're coming in here uh, playing spoiler. We don't want them to think that we're coming in here hoping that we have some type of a fighting chance. No, we're coming here saying, you know what? We deserve to be in postseason play. We fought our, and clawed our way all the way back here. And we, no matter where we play this game, uh, we expect to win. Absolutely. And if you've seen what Dan Campbell was saying, he's super excited. A lot of the players are excited for Sunday Night Football. They say this is a playoff game for their perspective, no matter what, what happens before with the Seattle Seahawks game. To them, this is a playoff game, an opportunity for the world to see Dan Campbell's Detroit Lions on the road to Lambeau Field where everybody's watching. What do you want to see from this Lions defense you know, we have been chewed up a little bit in run defense, but young players starting to step up. Do you think they control Aaron Jones, Green Bay's running back, who's putting up some good yards? What do you want to see from them against this offense in Green Bay? 
Well, one, we've seen what has happened in the last couple of weeks, Chicago and then Carolina uh, against the run. The Lions have, have given up some tremendous uh, yards. They've given up some really impactful plays. A lot of that have been um, kind of chunks uh, that you get in the running game that you expect to see in a passing attack. Uh, and for teams to be able to easily be able to do that, especially in the first half or first quarter in both games, uh, that should be a little bit of a concern. They will have to do that. Aaron Jones is going to present a lot of problems. They have a veteran quarterback. This isn't uh, a journey quarterback. This is someone who has uh, smarts. They have an offense that is in sync. They may not have some of the athletic ability that we've seen across the board against some of the other teams, but um, they're a good opponent. Um, you know, one thing I would look at with uh, Green Bay is how do you stop Aaron Rodgers? Uh, he's going to go into his play action. He's going to be looking at ways to really bait this team into having the safeties fall asleep. Um, he's tough to sack because he wants to throw it away. Uh, he gets outside of the pocket. And we know he's not a quarterback that's scared to run the football when he sees an, an alley or a lane open. So you do have to safeguard against that. Uh, but right now, defensively, if I had to look at what my concerns are, it would be that one, that they give up way too much in the running game early. But also, uh, they're going to get you know, at least attempted to be picked apart with the short passing attack, the, the screen passes, um, the short hits to the wide receivers to keep it in short down and distances so they can keep a, a very flexible uh, uh, attack offensively and one that you can't really have a lot of uh, guesses on. So that's that's going to be their, their way. And they're playing at home. So you don't want to start giving up big plays, uh, running game. You don't want to give up big plays over the top. Just make them earn their way down the field. 100%. Totally agree with that. You know, what can Aaron Glenn do? Blitz package, you know, maybe rush five instead of four to get to Aaron Rodgers. I think it's really important that we get under his skin. That's exactly what we did the first game this year. We got under his skin. He started making some errors and throwing some interceptions. What can Aaron Glenn do defensively to do that again? <laughs> Well, it's going to be tough to replicate that. I don't, you know, for to get a defensive end, a rush end, to get a a uh, interception and those type of things in the in the red zone, in the end zone, um, those are things that make a difference in the football game. I would say this: uh, when I you, you look at what they're the Packers, I think are going to try and do to the Lions. That's going to be get them into man coverage. If they can get the Lions into man coverage, they know that they're going to get less pressure. Aaron Roger. Uh, he probably gets, a, uh, you know, not as much time, but if he gets those hot throws and then guys are one-on-one -on -one and they can make guys miss, that could become problematic. Uh, the, the flip side to that is if you play too much zone, he's too crafty. Uh, he has players who have the ability to get open. They're playing at home. And I, I'm also concerned about the footing. You know, this is going to be deep into the – I've played at Lambeau. Uh, don't estimate the fact that the, the grounds itself could be a problem – especially if you have young players who have never played on a frozen field or have never played in cold weather, there are areas on the field, not only uh, the entire field being frozen, but there could be soft spot spots. There could be hard patches. There could be completely hard patches all over. And if that occurs, that becomes an advantage to the home team because they know where those things are. And um, uh, so that, that could be an issue. I'm, I'm going to wait and see what happens. Um, but, you know, for, you know, if I'm looking at Marion Glenn, I'm saying, you know what, just just make them earn their way down the field, uh, apply pressure at some unpredictable times and try not to get caught into where you're you're reacting uh, to what they do to you versus going out and putting that same pressure we saw at home that they put on the Packers. Lions offense, really good. Basically top 10 in every statistical category, top five in most of them. What can the Lions offense do in the cold? Ambo Field to exploit the defense of the Green Bay Packers. What do you want to see Ben Johnson come up with with this big game? I would really like to see them spread it out. I know they're going to want to run the football. I think that's been a strength of their play action, uh, making teams respect the run. Teams will respect the run, but I also think that they're going to need to spread this defense out just a little bit, and I think they can take advantage of some soft spots in the secondary for the Packers. Um, if they don't and they keep it compressed, my concern becomes uh, they're going to make it too easy to contain 
um, the, the Lions, I think they're going to be paying close attention to the tight end. You won't see the, the Lions tight end sneaking out and, and, and Brock finding some, some open areas um, that he's, he's been able to find and exploit the defenses. I think that that, that part has been seen in the last two weeks um, as being something that teams have fallen asleep at the will. Uh, but I don't think that'll happen. And then, two, I think they're going to have to find guys that can continue to move the chains. They're going to pay, in particular, close attention to St. Brown, especially on any first down uh, situations. And I think they will pay attention to him on third down, especially when they see it as being uh, potentially a, a a short passing play. Um, the, you know, the Lions have done a good job exploiting defenses and finding zones. Their players do a really good job if the the pressure doesn't get there. Uh, so I look for Ben Johnson and Jared Goff and those guys to try and take advantage of uh, any any type of coverages. They all have weaknesses. And if you can exploit those weaknesses or those open holes and hold up in your protection, then Green Bay is going to have their hands full. I actually pick uh, the Lions in this one uh, to actually win uh, because I, I really believe this team isn't uh, afraid and or buying into the mystique of Lambeau. I don't think they're, they're caught into the um, – uh, the pressure that other teams have had in the past that they've played there, you know, five, six years and having no success. These are young players that it doesn't matter. They've only played them at Ford Field and they beat them. And then some of them have maybe played them and they're one and one against them right now. So it's it, they don't care um, at this point. So that's not going to be that big of a deal, in my opinion. Talk about fear. And that's what Dan Campbell, he's fearless. He loves being aggressive. Do you think in a game like this, you should be aggressive. Go for it on fourth down. Maybe have some trick plays in there. Exploit what Green Bay may not know what's coming. Obviously, you know, we do fake punts. Everything that Dan Campbell does. you think this is a game that he could open that up a little bit? I would actually recommend against him getting into too many, you know, fake punts or, or trying to say, you know what, fourth down and we're in our own territory and we're giving them excellent field position if we don't get it. You know, anything short of, you know, fourth in a foot or inches, I, I just wouldn't trust it because anything could happen. A running back could slip out of the backfield. The quarterback could slip getting back and setting. A receiver could slip in a route. Uh, it just becomes less of a um, uh, an easier call when you're at home or if you're playing on a, on a more predictable field. Uh, we've seen that happen. We, we've seen uh, it turn disastrous, and you don't want to be falling behind because of play calling. Uh, at a place like Lambeau, you're already up against the crowd. You're already up against the uh, the climate, and then you're playing a formidable team. Uh, so when you put all those in play, you you got not play by the rules, but you got to play and coach smart football. So you got the Lions winning this game. You have the Lions making the playoffs. I do. Uh, I, well, I got them because I I I really think this is destiny. And I really believe that the Seahawks are going to do their part and not be able to follow through against the Rams. And then it's going to come down to the winner uh, in the, the the game that's nationally televised. Everybody's going to be watching for a reason. I think they flexed it and they moved it to that spot because they see that probability and that possibility happening uh, the game before in Seattle uh, with the Rams and the Seahawks. And if that occurs and it drops the way we think, then that will become the game to watch for that seventh seed in the NFC playoff uh, pitcher. And I think the Lions, if going into it with that on the line, I will be very surprised if the Lions don't win. That would be fantastic. I'm going to say, what do you got to say to people who are not subscribed to this channel? Get these guys to hit that old red button. I would just tell everyone to continue to subscribe to the channel and to hit that button because – they get to see you and I, and we get to interact with them. As I've said before, there's no place better to be than on a channel like ours that is committed and dedicated solely to um, the elevation conversation and engagement of the Detroit Lion football team, its fan base, and its community. Uh, continue to make us successful. We've been growing every year. We're looking forward to continue to hit other milestones in 2023, but the only way we're going to do it is if you hit that button. So we're going to need you to do that, and I will thank you for that. Thank you very much in advance. Absolutely, man. Fans view, players view, it's a hell of a channel. Appreciate everybody hanging out. Smash that like button as well. And with that said, adios. Perfect. 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 Perfect.